Yes, on initial jobless claims, we dropped 10,000 to 222,000. That is the lowest level on initial claims going all the way back to the last week in May, May 27th, when it was 202,000. And if we look at continuing claims, 1,473,000 going the other direction. Uh, April Fools, because that's the last time we're up at these levels with regard to continuing claims that have been, for the most part, a little better behaved. But over the last several weeks, initial claims have really dropped and call into question the whole notion of how this tight labor market ultimately is going to figure into how uh, investors and economists handicap the economy. We all know Jason Furman wrote an op-ed today talking about slack in the labor force being one of the critical tools that the Fed is going to continue to use to try to assess the level of pricing pressures. So these are very important issues. We all saw what the ECB did, and their yields are barely higher after a lot of volatility. Uh, maybe it wasn't widely expected by everybody, but all traders I talked to thought that uh, Lagarde had very little choice but to go fast and go hard. And with respect to its impact on the market, all our yields, Becky, from twos out to thirties, were lower again today until the volatility of the last 45 minutes or so, which has two-year and three-year notes going in and out of uh, negative and positive territory with respect to their yields. But I would continue to stress that we have turned the corner a bit after that August 26th speech of our chairman of the Fed, interest rates and equity markets, of course, thrown into a tizzy that seems to have moderated to some extent. Back to you. All right, Rick, thank you. Steve Leisman joins us right now with more. Uh, Steve, what do you take out of these numbers? Yeah, you know, Rick is right to, to point out this difference, uh, which is uh, interesting between the uh, continuing claims and the uh, weekly claims. And I'm looking here, it looks like continuing claims are up by about a million, if I'm right here, 1.3 million and one point. Four seven million, uh, a little bit more than that, actually, uh, uh, w which tells you that people are being laid off and spending a little bit of time in the um, uh, uh, being jobless before getting rehired. But the inputs, the, the weekly inputs to the uh, jobless claims numbers are low, and it suggests the job market remains tight. Uh, the Fed wants to see a softer uh, labor market. Uh, the Beige Book yesterday suggested that there was maybe some softness, but not a whole lot in an overall tight labor market. The question is, uh, as Furman raises and everybody else, how much softness do we need in order to get inflation under control? I still believe that putting people to work is sort of not inflationary. I think it may help with the inflation problem in the sense that it would increase supply in a lot of areas that are short of supply, both in the service sector and in the goods sector. Uh, so uh, it's not clear to me that that is an inflationary problem, but certainly the Fed wants to see softer uh, labor markets. Joe?